And just reading up on the draft, it seems like, do, do you think there's a, a decent chance they go? I mean, obviously, when you did the uh, the draft with Fran, Tyler Guyton was, mm. uh, was, he did well in that. And do you, so do you think there's a decent chance they go tackle in the, in the first round, kind of the, the succession plan? Type? I do. Um, just because that is what their history tells us, right? Now, Howie has had, the, the I've said this before, the great thing about having Howie Roseman as a general manager is that he's been here so long that we have like a real sample size as opposed to what, what you might not have with other general managers. First round picks, he has only ever used them on the premium positions, right? Quarterback, defensive line, offensive line, and wide receiver. That's it. Now, I think cornerback is a possibility and is not one that he is opposed to. I think that's been a little bit more situational. We know that they were interested in corners over the past couple of years from, you know, Derek Stingley to Patrick Sertan and J.C. Horn and maybe even Christian Gonzalez last year. Um, so that is a possibility. And I think if they were like hoping that uh, need met value at any position, they might hope that it's corner this year. But aside from that, I don't think they're taking a wide receiver in the first round just because of the personality dynamics. I don't think they're taking a defensive tackle again. It seems like edge rusher is not really uh, ripe in that area for them. I think that would be one that they would be interested in, especially if Hassan Reddick or Josh Sweat is moved, right? Obviously, they're not taking a linebacker, and I don't think they're taking a first-round safety. So barring that, we also know that, you know, um, Howie will say that if we say that we're going to be about something, we got to have our actions follow our words. And if we are all about building a great offensive line, we're going to have to use resources to do that. They know that Lane Johnson is not going to be here forever. It might be one year. It might be two years. Tackle seems like the most Howie Roseman pick here. It's, and it's the same area where they took Andre Dillard a couple years ago. Um, that said, uh, Tommy Lawler, friend of the show had a, had a, a good sort of thought exercise up on, on Eagles Blitz, his website over the weekend about sort of comparing like the Eagles draft philosophy to the Chiefs draft philosophy. And Zach was talking about how like impressive it is that the Chiefs have turned over their defense so much with all these young guys. And part of it is they let those guys play. And the Eagles, I think like you could make, it, it goes both ways. You could make the case that, well, it's a good thing if you were allowed to redshirt these guys because it means that you've got better players than them, right? I, I think like sp very specifically of N'Kobe Dean from his rookie year, like he, he can't get on the field because TJ Edwards and Kaiser White are playing so well. That's good. The flip side to that is you don't get the information that you need. And at some point you do have to trust these guys. And so they go into this year having to trust N'Kobe Dean, but they don't have the full picture of information. now. If you play guys as a rookie, you might get some false positives or some false negatives. Like guys take time to develop. But I do think that there is a bit of a um, reluctance for the Eagles, and I don't know if it's coaching staff or front office, to sometimes let the young guys play. Yeah, and I just think, you know, the other guy that I thought of in terms of just letting a guy sit and, and watching him, you know, letting him develop kind of behind the scenes, let him watch the games, is Jordan Mailata, who obviously – Resource yeah. wise, was not nearly the same commitment as as these other guys. But like, if we're talking about team building over the past couple of years, that is like the great hit of the Howie Roseman era to get no you know an, a legitimate mm -hmm. left tackle because Jeff Statland said, "Hey, this guy has incredible skills. You know, we we need to let him sit for a couple of years, keep him on the roster, but just like let him watch and." develop and then in a couple of years I, I think I can make him a legit player I, I do think it's a little bit different though when it's the first round when you're taking that that player and you're also trying to win right now because they're like there are a couple of guys um, and there are like economic reasons to do it because if you're drafting a guy and letting him sit for a year or two you're not getting the full value of that of that contract that said there are a couple of guys in that range like it, it seems like offensive tackle in that late teens, early 20 range, there are some legit players and kind of well thought of guys and, and guys who, you know, you read the scouting reports on a couple of these guys, uh, Marius Mims and Guyton are kind of mm -hmm. the two. I think a lot of people say these guys are raw, but they have like, they have a ton of talent. They might be good in a couple of years. And it just made me think like, oh, well, maybe the Eagles are the perfect spot, right? Because if, if these are going to be the best guys in a couple of years and you just have to deal with some growing pains, 
well, they're probably more equipped to, to handle that because their bad years will just be preseason and, you know, the practice, you know, practices. And then if, if Lane or uh, Mylotta gets hurt, then they can play or something like that. So. And I also think there's a, an interesting Jeff Stoutland conversation here because if you think, okay, we have the best offensive line coach in the league. This guy can develop players better than anybody. He's, and he's being paid for that, right? Is the best use of that yeah. skill being able to draft offensive linemen on day three and Jeff Stoutland can turn them into starting caliber offensive linemen? Or is it drafting really good prospects on you know day one and day two and he can turn them into pro bowlers, right? And I don't know that there's a right answer there, but in terms of like resource allocation, I... Like, I don't think that you should have to use only first and second round and third round picks to fill out the offensive line if you have this special weapon. Um, and, like, it's a little bit like the, the Niners defensive line, right? Uh, they have this guy, Chris K- Kukuric, I think is, is the pronunciation. And, like, well they of, always yeah. get the most out of defensive linemen. And for a long time, it was like, well, we'll just sign these guys, like, uh, Arden Key or Cleland Farrell or whatever, these guys who are sort of journeymen, and he will turn them into productive, like above average starters. And then they instead go out and they get, you know, they get Bosa, they sign Javon Hargrave, they go trade for Chase Young, and they're trying to get like the, uh, like the over the top production from these high uh, ceiling guys. And I don't know what the right way to do it is, but if you're just thinking about like, how can we borrow from some places to fill out the rest of the roster? I think you can make the case that it might make more sense to add some late round guys, but then you also factor in like Jeff Stoutland is the guy in the building who has a lot of juice come draft time. And so of course he's going to be pushing for better players to, to join his room. Yeah. I think it's a really, you laid it out perfectly there. I just think it's like a very interesting philosophical discussion because on the one hand, it looks like the Eagles will get what they want, you know, in terms of, you know, a succession plan, premium position, They've always built on the trenches, and, and it seems like the board is going to fall that way, but I'm not sure it's the right thing for this year's team. And like you said, like if Jeff Stoutland is is that good at developing players, and by the way, he is very good. Like He has an excellent track record. Not like every player has worked out, but the fact that Mylata is like a legit left tackle is a huge deal. Like it's all the other mistakes that the Eagles have made at the top of, you know, drafts like Andre Dillard, Andre Dillard got completely erased because they drafted this rugby player right. and they just let him sit on the back end of the roster for a couple of years. So I'm with you. I, I you know, I, I, I like the idea of drafting other tackle just because that's the Eagles I know. And in general, it's been a pretty good product, slightly above average, even, you know, when you, uh, you wait in the bad years, but on the other hand, I, I kind of feel like you do too, where, well, it actually, and it comes full circle this year with a specific question you asked because last year they used a third round pick on Tyler Steen. And Tyler Steen doesn't really get on the field. He starts one game at right guard, but Sua Opeta started most of those games. And if they had had, if they had just let Tyler Steen play those games, even if it was like, you know, and, you know, Nick Sirianni will always say you, you have to do what you have to do, like to what you think is going to give you the best chance to win that Sunday. You cannot think of the bigger picture. But, would the Eagles be in better position this offseason if they had six games of seeing Tyler Steen play and also giving him that development time? I think, I think they would. And that's really the other argument is that not only does it give you a better uh, understanding of the players, but you are investing the like on-field time to hopefully let them get better over the course of time. So sometimes it's Jordan Mailata, and he can get better on the side, but sometimes there are guys who need to play in order to, to get better themselves. And so it, it is this, this interesting push and pull that I think the Eagles are on sort of one side of relative to some other teams in the league. That's the offensive version of the church of uh, Christian Ellis, right? Yeah, and, and honestly, like the Ellis thing is very much a part of this. Like, we do, I don't need to go back here, but like... I'm sorry, you know that Nicholas Morrow is not going to like get better over time and is what he is, whereas Christian Ellis could be just a little bit better and you, is under team control. I mean, a very, a very short-sighted roster decision as far as I'm concerned, as you already know.